BMW 2 Series Grand Tourer 2015 present. BMW is lucky in having a very loyal fan base who, having grown out of its range of sports cars and executive saloons, will look without hesitation to have that badge on the front of an MPV or an SUV big enough to transport their growing family and associated paraphernalia. Hence the 2 Series Grand Tourer which shares its underpinnings with the 2 Series Active Tourer. The firm's able 5 seat front-wheel drive MPV but stretches the distance between the front and rear wheels by 11 cm to fit in two extra seats in the third row. Adding the usual range of highly efficient petrol and diesel engines, a number of decently equipped trim levels and the sort of upmarket feel you would associate with BMW and you've got yourself a very popular premium people carrier. Those engines include BMW's 3-cylinder 1.5 petrol and diesel engines, the 218i and 216d. There is also a 187bhp 2-liter petrol, 220i, and a series of 2-liter 4-cylinder diesel units in either the 218d or 220d, as well as the option of 4-wheel drive. On the road, it's no sports car with any of those options, but it's surprisingly refined and certainly handles well for a 7-seat MPV. Trims range from the SE, which includes such goodies as set nav, dual zone climate control, rear parking sensors and automatic lights and wipers, through Sport, which adds bigger alloys and sports seats, to M Sport, with its sporty body kit and suspension. The interior feels plush. There's the flexibility to slide the rear seats forward to accommodate the taller passengers in the rearmost seats or increase boot space, and the option of stowing all passenger seats for maximum space. Luxury trim was added to the range and includes 17-inch alloy wheels, but it has a different set of visual upgrades inside, inside and out to sport models and the leather seats. On the road, the 220D diesel doesn't feel as punchy as it does in some other BMW cars, but even when the car is fully laden, it produces enough torque low down that the 8-speed automatic gearbox doesn't have to shuffle down too many cogs for you to make progress. The slightly less punchy 218D is not quite as quick, but it's significantly cheaper to buy and has more than enough punch to cope with a full load. With a little less weight to shift and smidge more power at its top end, the 220i petrol feels sprightlier. However, with less torque to call on, the auto box is more eager to change down in search of higher revs. The petrol is easy the more refined, though, staying quieter when working hard and sending less vibration back through the controls. The 218i, meanwhile, feels very refined for a 3-cylinder engine and pulls the considerable weight of the 2-series Grand Tourer very well. The 3-cylinder 216D diesel is refined and smooth, but can feel a little overstretched when faced with extended inlines. For the extra power and stability that it brings, the 220D next drive form is about as good as it gets. To drive, it's no sports car with any of those options, but it's surprisingly refined and certainly handles well for a 7-seat MPV. The red is generally smooth, but can turn sharp and harsh over broken surfaces. While there's more body lean than you'd expect in corners from something wearing the BMW badge, perhaps. Size-wise, the 2 Series Grand Tourer sits in a bit of a niche. It's smaller than 7-seat rivals such as the Ford Galaxy and Seat Alhambra, and the cut above the Ford Grand C Max and Renault Grand Scenic. It has a decent amount of front space for tall adults and enough room for two more in the middle row. The 6th and 7th seats can be pulled up from the boot floor using one hand and can be accessed easily by folding down and sliding forward and outside middle row seats. However, he won't want to be in there for long as an adult. On models fitted with a sliding bench, you can push the middle row forward to free up knee room for the rearmost occupants. But if you are an adult, by the time you'd happy, there is very little space left for the passengers directly in front. With the third row folded away and the middle row slid right back, there is a 560-liter boot that has a wide opening, a flush boot lip, and a usefully square shape. Sliding the middle row forward increases boot space to 720 liters, but decreases leg room. The middle row seats can be folded in a 40x20x40 by 20 by 40 configuration, and when down, they lie almost flat. This can be done electronically, using buttons on the boot walls, standard on luxury and sport, optional on other models. This feature works well and increases boot space to 1820 liters. The front passenger seat can also be folded flat to leave a load bay 2.6 meter long, as long as you avoid the electric seat option. 
It's a car that will have been subjected to family use, so it's worth checking the interior condition carefully for wear and tear, including stretching of the plastics and stains on the trim. Also, make sure the seats all fold away and flip up as they should, especially those that are operated electrically by button. Check the exterior for scuff marks and the alloys for curb damage, as these cars will have been used in urban car parks and on school runs. So far, reported issues with the 2 Series Grand Tourer are remarkably few. Check for any trouble with a blocked diesel particulate filter (DPF), especially on cars that might have been used for sports, city journeys. Otherwise, there have been a few reports of interior train creaking and some issues with the plastic flaps in the boot working loose, but nothing seemingly large enough to worry about. The engines and mechanicals are well known from other BMW models and their reputation is good. Parts will be freely available at most dealers and with some specialist independents too. The electrical contact of the electronic control unit ECU or the electric powered steering EPS is not sufficiently robust over the service life of the vehicle. As a result, the powered steering support may fail, possibly leading to a disconcerting driving situation for the driver. Additionally, in a few cases, a localized thermal event cannot be excluded. The bolts securing the rear axle support should not be reused after removal. Affected vehicles may have had the rear axle support refitted after repair work using the original fitted bolts. This may work in their noise and vibration or likely continued use may affect the vehicle's handling. The 218i and 220i are both smooth and reasonably powerful petrol engines and do a good job of moving the 2 Series Grand Tourer around in a refined fashion. However, if you do an average of high mileage and you'll pay more for fuel, is neither can match the economy of the diesels. The 216d is the smallest and least powerful diesel, but it only really struggles on steep hills. When fully loaded, the majority of buyers will find it perfect for urban use. You'll also get a claimed average fuel consumption figure of 68.9 mpg. The 218D gains an extra cylinder and more power, but we'd stick with the 216D. The 220D is a tempting package, too, with reasonable economy and plenty of oomph, but unless you face the higher builds, we'd opt for the smaller diesel. All the 2 Series Grand Tourer cars are well equipped, with the entry-level SE coming with a long list of desirables, including sat-nav, dead radio, Bluetooth, dual-zone climate control, rear parking sensors and automatic lights and wipers. Step up the sports and you'll add bigger 17-inch wheels, sports seats and a host of visual upgrades inside and out. Luxury adds leather seats and some trim details, while top-spec AM Sport gives you larger alloys and sports seats, as well as a stiffer suspension that we don't recommend, as it ruins the ride quality. Our favorite BMW 2 Series Grand Tourer 216 DSE Well, if you are the owner of this car, then please describe the problem that you had to face during the operation of the car. Perhaps it is your feedback that will help viewers when choosing a car. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for attention. It isn't much work for you to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.